I always talk about Tony, and I'll always continue to talk about Tony. You know, even when I was pushing the sort of more techno sound, um, I would do interviews that were more techno led. You know, I would always speak about Tony. I mean, he's he's, he's the the main sort of inspiration uh, for me and what I have evolved as a DJ, really. Um, you know, it's like when when I come to events like this um, and people are playing sort of bang, bang, bang for a full hour. I mean, I was saying to my friend tonight, you know, you wouldn't have seen Tony doing that. You know, Tony wasn't bang, bang all night. Um, he's labelled as a hard house DJ, but yeah, you know, he, he played across the board, you know what I mean? I remember Tony playing Todd Terry records and stuff. And, Playing at Miss Money Pennies, playing at Chuff Chuff, playing at Cream, um, you know. So he played right across the board, but you know, I think he was. Most people recognise him for uh, the later sort of tracks that he made, you know, um, which are obviously awesome, you know. Uh, I had the privilege of going into the studio quite a lot with Tony. I was actually in the studio when he made Ario already. I mean, I play it in every single hard set that I do, you know, I'll probably start getting on people's nerves, but it's a special one for me, you know, I was in the studio when he done it, and in Tony's studio, he's got a main studio, then he's got a vocal booth, and in the vocal booth you have a, a window, and uh, Tony had just finished making Are You Already, and I had left the main studio, uh, went into the office and came back through the studio and went into the vocal booth, but Tony didn't see me, I was sitting in there just, you know, looking through the studio, and Tony was sort of tweaking it, and then he's t he, he he put it back to the start and he got up and he, he played it from the start and he was just in there dancing his heart out like he absolutely loved it. <laughs> so he was a bit embarrassed when he seen me sitting there, but you know, that's just that's just how he was, you know. I also remember the first time he played it at Trade. I'm not sure if you're aware, but the DJ booth in Trade was soundproofed. And uh, so, you know, when Tony wanted to play I'd get a reaction of a record, you know, he would open the door and have to stick his head round and have a listen, probably coined the phrase, you know, one foot in the DJ booth, one foot in the dance floor, you know, but that was Tony all over, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I do, I do speak about him quite a bit and um, I mean, when I stopped playing Hard House, people, they were so angry because I was a traitor that I had betrayed this uh, trust and uh, trust and, and, and stuff, uh, you know, and betrayed this sort of legacy that I was meant to carry on of Tony's, you know. I mean, you know, Tony, Tony's sound was changing, you know, listen to the dawn, you know. It was still hard house, but it was evolving, you know. Um, you know, and that's why people love Tony, you know, because he was always a way ahead of everybody else, you know. Uh, of all the DJs who played at Trade, you know, Tony was, he was always a few sort of uh, steps ahead of everybody, you know. But um, I think one of the main things about Tony, you know, he always had time for his fans, you know. Um, <laughs> I remember one day uh, he was playing on wheels and um, this girl kept coming up to him and um, she was hanging about, hanging about and then at the end of the night she, she got to speak to Tony, you know, and she was there. Uh, with her boyfriend and she's you know really smiling and flashing the eyes at Tony and stuff and I remember Tony just grabbing her hand and said I really fancy your boyfriend and she was really she was really devastated like that Tony liked her boyfriend more than her <laughs> yeah. I th you know there's so many stories you know you could talk about it you could talk about it all night um, but I suppose for me, uh, meeting Tony at such a young age and coming over to England um, for the week, all the day I was meant to come over for, I ended up being, well, I'm still here, 15 years. Um, just showed the sort of unique side of his character, you know what I mean? You know, I was there for, even for him to let me come over for a week, you know, was incredible. So from that, I mean, that's kind of rubbed off on me a bit. You know, I've always tried to, have time for new producers, new DJs when I was on Radio 1, 
you know, a, a big part of the show was about new DJs, you know, new producers. Um, so, you know, I've tried to take little bits and pieces from them over the years. And I like to think with the, the way I play the music, you know, I'm try, I try to be as forward thinking with it as I can, you know what I mean? With keeping in mind that it's, it's still a party and people want to hear stuff that they know, but you know, to try and push the, the boundary a little bit as well, I think it's very important. So, hopefully, you know, hopefully I'm doing that a little bit. But these parties, it's very enjoyable to come back and just play all the big ones that I loved from, you know, the early days of going to trade.